Hey guys, it's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe, and I wanted to just talk to you guys a little bit about some of the most expensive Sega CD games and whether or not I think they're worth it. Keep in mind, I haven't played these that recently. Um, I have played them all. Like I said, I've played every game in my collection in my set, but with new games coming out and time constraints, I don't always go back to the older stuff all the time. Um, so first off, <clears throat> we'll start out with the granddaddy of most expensive Sega CD titles. Um, of course, a lot of games on the Sega CD have since been re-released, or maybe some people, I guess, lost interest in them because they weren't, like, amazing titles. Um, games like that would be, like, the Lunar Games, where, you know, they've been re-released over the years. Uh, games that nobody seems to really care too much about, like Radical Rex is still kind of pricey, uh, Mad Dog McCree 2, uh, Mad Dog McCree 1, you know, Crime Patrols, like a hundred bucks. So games that like are, are definitely on the higher spectrum, but either people don't seem to really dig as much or they're just not as rare. I'm not really sure. Um, I did check price charting this morning as of today. These were the most expensive games that I saw, minus the Smurfs, which uh, I found interesting they even included because that was a PAL release that I converted over sent to Good Deal Games, and they released it very briefly, but it's not an official release. It's it's a GoodDealGames.com release, which they then realized something to do with the rights, and they pulled it, and it never... I don't know how many of them got out there, but it's not a real release. So, I own it. I, I didn't include that in this, because it's not a real release. Um, so, the most expensive of them all, and if you're a Sega CD person, you know this, it's uh, Keo or KO Flying Squadron. And what this is, is it's pretty much a side-scrolling shmup, or shoot 'em up where you control a little girl with bunny ears riding a, a I guess it's like a dinosaur. Um, very anime-looking-ish. Um, I don't really remember how difficult it was, but I don't think it was like a pushover either, from what I recall. The graphics were cute, you know, the anime cutscenes were good. I didn't even realize there's tape on the back of this box. The anime cutscenes were pretty good. Um, I don't know if you could check out some of the screenshots on the back of the box there. And, um... This game is, like, an absurd amount of money. I've seen it, on at least on price charting. I know people have told me on eBay and stuff, um, like, three to eight hundred dollars, depending on when and how, if it's complete and whatever. And I don't think this one is worth that. I mean, it's a cool game, and um, as most of us know, it's in good shape. There's, like, two or three really light marks on it. As most of us know, the Sega CD doesn't have any copyright protection. So you could pretty much copy any discs you want, download them off the internet, whatever, download them, burn them. Um, I'm not really a big proponent of that, but the people who are, who are selling these for $800 on eBay to a collector who's looking to complete their set, they're the ones making the money. You know, the developer probably doesn't exist. Uh, the publisher isn't making any money on it anymore. So I mean, if it's something you just want to play or try out, there's kind of no harm done in my eyes, but to each their own. Um, I wouldn't say this one's really worth the money. Um, if it was maybe like a hundred bucks and you really love shmups and you really want to complete your set, awesome. But for like 500 or whatever else it goes for, I would say no. Um, it just it just happens to have this kind of illustrious uh, thing going on with it, but it's not like the best game in the world by any means. Um, I'm probably going to go out of order here because I don't remember exactly what the, the order was in terms of prices. Um, next is another one everyone's heard of, Snatcher. And um, I'm pretty sure this was originally released on the MSX and it was um, upgraded and, and remastered or something, redone, and put on the Sega CD in English. Great game, awesome, like, I wouldn't say point and click, um, it's more like selecting dialogue, um, learning new words, and talking to people. There are some shooting segments. It's in a great cyberpunk world. It's one of Hideo Kojima's um, big games that has come out over the, the years. Great like anime feel, great cyberpunk feel, awesome voice acting. If you like games like Willy Beamish, Rise of the Dragon, um, old school like dialogue driven action adventure games, I would say for around, I think this goes between like one to three hundred usually. Maybe it's in the hundred dollar range. Um, this one never got, these two actually, did any of these? No, none of these ever got re-released that I know of. So this is the only place you'll find them and that's another reason obviously the price is so high. 
as I said, with things like Lunar Silver Star and Eternal Blue, they've now gotten more in-depth versions released on the PSP or the PS1. I think this is a great game. Um, I know Andrew Rosa, my buddy over at Mastercast TV, he uh, he said he likes it. He doesn't know if it was. I think he said he didn't know if it was really worth justified the price. This one I think is. This one meant a lot to me. I had a great time with it. The story was great. I was very intrigued and interested while I was playing it. I thought it was awesome. But again, you have to like that type of gameplay. If you're going in for something really action heavy, you probably won't like it. Um, this is another big one. Uh, Cobra the Space Adventure, as it's called here, the Space Adventure. Um, this again is similar in terms of Snatcher. It is a very, very dialogue driven like adventure game. Um, I don't even remember there being any action segments in this, at least that I got up to. I, I got fairly far in the game, maybe a little more than halfway through. Um, did get stuck a couple times over the course of the game that I've played, but it's a great game. Again, it's like Snatcher. Snatcher, I would say, is better. Rise of the Dragon, I would also say, is better. Um, this is around, I think, the $100 to $200 range, if I recall correctly. Again, I could be off on the prices. I was looking on price charting. I was looking at the loose. I was looking at the complete in box. You know, I don't have a sheet in front of me or a laptop in front of me to reference it. But it's a cool game. Um, I think I've seen the anime. I can't recall. That's what it's based on. And that was pretty cool, too. But probably not worth it when it gets into, like, that $200 range. It's a weird game. Um... You know, if you need it for your collection and you do like dialogue-heavy games uh, with humor in them and stuff like that, Rise of the Dragon-esque, then I would say check it out. But it's, it probably shouldn't be on the mainstream, you know, most uh, most of people's mainstream list. Uh, it's good. I like it. But I also like quirky shit sometimes, you know. Uh, and coming in at number four, Earthworm Jim Special Edition. Now, from what I remember... This is the Earthworm Jim that we all got on Genesis and Super Nintendo with, I believe, um, you know, more music, extra frames of animation, so it does look a lot better, it sounds a lot better. This is kind of like the complete package. If, if you're a big Earthworm Jim fan, and this is around, I think, 100, if you're an Earthworm Jim fan and uh, you really enjoy those titles, you have a Sega CD, and you want, like, the definitive version, I would say this is worth it. I'm not the biggest platformer guy in the world, though I have really started appreciating them again in the past few months with my Wii U. Um, it's cool. I also always found Earthworm Jim to be very difficult. So, it's got a great sense of humor. The action's fun. The hand-drawn looking graphics, so they might even be hand-drawn, are awesome. Um, if you like Earthworm Jim a lot and you know what you're getting into, it has great 90s tood. Um, you know, it depends on what it's worth to you. That's what most of these are. But... Again, if you want the definitive edition, this is kind of the way to go. I know they've released other versions of this over the years. I don't know the exact difference between those and this. So forgive me for my uh, slight ignorance there. And finally, we have Popful Mail. Um, it says Magical Fantasy Adventure, but nobody... I think that's just kind of like describing the game. This game is frigging awesome. Uh, this is, I believe, between the $100, $200 range. It is a side-scrolling action RPG, so you're fighting like the way you would in, let's say, something like, sort of like Earthworm Jim, um, but with a sword or magic, and you're talking to people, there's little anime cutscenes, uh, the cutscenes are cool, the voice acting is good, a little cheesy, you go into a shop, you can upgrade your armor, upgrade your character and stuff, sort of reminds me a little bit of Zelda 2 on the NES, um, but this game is really awesome, I thought this was one of the, the better games out of the most expensive titles. I would say this and Snatcher for me were great. I never ended up beating this one, um, but anytime I play it, I always enjoy it. When I show this to my friends, they can't believe something this cool and different came out on the Sega CD. So if, again, you, you play them however you can um, and see if they're worth it to you. That's really what this ends up being. Uh, but this is one that has never gotten re-released and has sort of uh, been on everyone's radar lately, and it's just a really great game. And that's really it. I did want to show one more thing. This is just kind of a um, an odd side thing. It has nothing to do with the price. I think the price actually went down more recently. It used to be around like 50, 60 bucks, I think. Now it's around like 20 or 30, and the reason for that is they have come out with 
aftermarket third party ones now. Other companies have come out with these. So we have the Sega CD backup RAM card. And what this is, is this lets you not only save blocks to your Sega CD, but also save your save games and blocks to your RAM cartridge. It goes into the top of the Genesis slot and it holds way more than the Sega CD. Most games or some games don't really use it, um, but you can always go into the menu in the BIOS and like when you don't put a disc in and you push, a, I think it's like A, B, or C, and you can go to memory and then transfer stuff to your RAM cart back and forth, which is what I've done with a lot of games over the years. Certain games do require you to play it and save it on the system. Uh, it usually says on the back of the box whether or not, if I recall correctly, that it does support it or not. Maybe I'm wrong. I was pretty sure it said it on the back of the boxes. I don't see it. Maybe it's in the manuals. But either way, like I said, check out these games where you can. Um, and if they're worth it to you, then they're worth it to you. If you're going for a complete set, you kind of don't have a choice. Uh, sort of like I did years and years ago. But um, if you're going for playability, some of these might not be your cup of tea. Thanks, guys, for watching. It's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. Be good.